In 2016, when Elon Musk showed off his brainchild Starship as well as his dream of multi-planetary life to the world, this really caused a fierce debate in the space community with an overwhelming number of people attacking Musk. Most of those come from the politicians. Starship is a joke, will never fly, they said. Not only because they did not trust Musk, but most of all they feared that the development of a private space company could turn the tables, usurping the monopoly of the legacy companies from which they benefit. And finally, that nightmare has come true. Starship is now so famous while the successor agency's space launch system turned out to be a literal joke. So, how has SpaceX used the reverse card in the political game? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. In 2020, while SpaceX was quietly testing Starship prototypes in low-altitude test flights, someone shared that Starship is a joke from the material selection to the construction principle to the aerodynamic shape for re-entry. Not to mention third-world-style assembly of hardware literally on a beach. Building a flyback booster stage is one thing. Building a manned reusable re-entry vehicle is a few leagues above Elon Musk and probably above SpaceX as well. Looks like an investor marketing exercise to me, intended to generally boost the stock value of Elon Musk's other operations using New Horizons and disruptive innovation clout. When reading these words out of the blue, I imagine Blue Origin's case. For over two decades, Jeff Bezos's firm has not made any revenue as far as I know, so theoretically, he suffered heavy losses. But it's so surprising that in 2024, Amazon founder surpassed tech guru Elon Musk to return to the top place in the Bloomberg Billionaires Index with a $200 billion net worth. Oh my God, do you know what I mean? However, unlike Jeff, Elon is really serious with his Starship program. It explains why instead of becoming a dreamy rocket like New Glenn, Starship actually went into real life. This vehicle has taken off the ground three times and has been preparing for more flights in the near-term future. Its potential is also demonstrated by a file of high-quality customers that it owns, including the tycoons and government agencies. The Mega Rocket's attraction lies in extremely modern and advanced technologies that we have never seen before. Ironically, they are something that was previously poo-pooed a joke. What makes Starship so special? The first one is about the material selection. The rocket body is generally made of aerospace-grade aluminum or titanium, as both metals are strong and also lightweight, with some additional parts being made out of carbon composites. Carbon composites may be promising in the future as they are very lightweight yet strong materials. For that reason, when SpaceX selected the stainless steel for Starship's hull, people felt weird. Critics argued that stainless steel was relatively heavy compared to carbon composites commonly used in aerospace applications. To be honest, choosing the right material for a rocket's hull is indeed crucial, as it needs to withstand extreme conditions during launch, flight, and re-entry. Here are some factors to consider when selecting materials for rocket hulls. The material must be strong enough to withstand the structural stresses during launch and flight, as well as potential impacts from debris or micrometeoroids. Rockets need to be as lightweight as possible to maximize payload capacity. Therefore, Materials with high strength to weight ratios are preferred. The material must be able to handle extreme temperatures experienced during launch, atmospheric re-entry, and in space. The hull material should have smooth surfaces to minimize aerodynamic drag during flight. The material must be cost-effective as rocket construction can be prohibitively expensive. Access to the material and ease of fabrication are also important considerations. Starship is being made out of steel, specifically a combination of 301 and 304L stainless steel. Although more expensive, stainless steel can withstand higher temperatures compared to aluminum, which is advantageous for components subjected to extreme heat during rocket propulsion. Compared to titanium, stainless steel is easier to fabricate and weld compared to titanium. This can result in reduced manufacturing complexity and costs. In terms of cost, steel is also much cheaper than carbon. In 2019, Elon Musk explained that SpaceX was spending close to $200 per kilogram of carbon fiber compared to the $3 per kilogram they paid for steel. This switch to steel has allowed SpaceX to prototype and iterate at a rapid pace that they wouldn't have been able to do if they were still using carbon composites. However, the Raptor engine is much more insane. 
It's the rare type of rocket engine running on a full flow stage combustion cycle and is the first one to be successful at it. A full flow stage combustion engine refers to how a pump spins a turbine to drive the engine, using what's called a pre-burner to get this process going by injecting a small amount of fuel. Normally, some of the propellant is expended in a traditional open cycle engine to start this process, but Raptor will use every drop of propellant available, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. Raptor burns that fuel at a high enough pressure that can then steer the fire from pre-burner back into the combustion chamber and completely burn that propellant with the rest of the propellant, says space consultant Charlie Garcia from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. And it does this in a very clever way that only the Russians have done previously by putting all the propellant in the engine through the pre-burners. As a result, Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, about three times greater, making it the highest pressure rocket engine in existence and leading to its aforementioned larger thrust than Merlin despite its similar size. Another advantage of Raptor is the use of liquid oxygen and methane, which is something largely unprecedented in the rocket industry or even very high flying rockets. Methalox requires a bit better metal alloys that were only available until recently, and that is why the a sudden heavy interest in it. Methane in and of itself isn't optimal for atmospheric or above atmosphere range, but can prevent a buildup of deposits in the engine compared to other fuels like kerosene, a process known as coking, while its higher performance allows for lower costs. The cost of propellant for liquid rockets is such a trivial proportion of the total launch costs, says space consultant Rand Simberg. With reusable vehicles, we want to get to the point at which we care what the propellant costs. In airlines, typically 35% of the total operating costs is fuel. With a rocket, it's less than 1% traditionally. Additionally, according to Elon Musk's vision of Mars colonization, methane can be produced there. This provides the optimization of cost and convenience. The final one is about the latest advanced technology in orbit refueling. Under the requirement of NASA's Artemis III to ferry astronauts to the lunar surface, SpaceX first has to master how to refuel a starship in low Earth orbit after it has already blasted off the planet. The tricky concept is known as cryogenic propellant transfer, something never done before in microgravity. By completing the transfer of cryogenic fuel between internal tanks in Flight 3, it can be said that SpaceX is on the threshold of mastering this technology. Once upon a time, even before SLS was born, NASA was interested in developing refueling technology in space. Unfortunately, when Congress directed the agency to build a large rocket based upon Space Shuttle-era technology called the Space Launch System, they also quietly put on the back burner its work. The reason for this is rumored that funding for NASA's efforts to develop so-called propellant depots and the capability to store and transfer cryogenic rocket fuels in orbit was considered a threat to the existence of SLS program. The SLS contractors did not like this, and thus, we have a vehicle that is costing $2 billion a year to develop. Fortunately, the emergence of the Starship project is truly a lifeboat for NASA's unfinished dream in the past. How much will SpaceX Starship, the most powerful rocket in the world, be priced for one mission? Wow! In the latest statement, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk confirmed that his Starship project is back on track, meaning no matter how large an advanced Starship is, SpaceX can be able to lower its cost per flight to $2 million as an initial goal. This is a big transformation compared to 2022, when Elon had to increase the price a little bit at less than $10 million. This might be due to projected cost cuts being entangled for years, leading to failure to work the price all the way down to that point. But now, SpaceX confidently says they have found a way around that obstacle. So what did they do? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. With a payload capacity of up to 200 tons, the future Starship 3 will have a lower launch cost than SpaceX's original rocket, the Falcon 1 small launch vehicle, which had a price of about $10 million. The Starship 3, much taller version, will be 400 times more payload for less than the cost of a Falcon 1. One. Ultimately, I think we might be able to get the cost per flight to Earth orbit down to around $2 million or $3 million. These are unthinkable numbers, but we're not breaking any physics to achieve this. This is the latest update given SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk at the company talk on April 4. The fixed cost? 
To be honest, it's not the first time this incredible number has been revealed. Back in 2019, Elon also publicized that if you consider operational costs, maybe it'll be like $2 million. At that time, the number of $2 million was broken down as follows, $900,000 for propellant and $1.1 million for ground support. The original Starship version uses 1,200 tonnes of propellant and super heavy uses, about 3,300 tonnes, 4,500 tonnes in total, 3.55 tonnes of liquid oxygen for every one tonne of liquid methane. 3,510 tons of versus 989 tons of liquid methane. NASA paid $160 per ton for oxygen, and on the open market, liquid methane is around $400 per ton. This is $562,000 worth of oxygen and $396,000 of methane for a booster and a Starship, a total of about $900,000. Yes, Elon is right on the money. Among that, a ship alone is $240,000 for full fueling. Keep in mind that all data in the price of propellant could be no longer true now, so I just use them for demonstration. So how about Starship V3? The Starship uses 2,300 tons of propellant and super heavy uses, about 4,050 tons, 6,350 tons in total. You know, without calculation, we can be aware that $900,000 of propellant cannot power a giant vehicle like the V3. How will SpaceX handle this? Elon described oxygen as almost free. This is a future state statement where SpaceX will make massive solar-powered oxygen capture and liquefaction systems. Liquid oxygen is $40 per metric ton to distill from the air. The V3's upper stage, based on calculation, would be $460,000 to get fully fueled. $460,000? for 200,000 kilograms of payload is $2.3 per kilogram or about $0.96 per pound. If SpaceX reduces the cost with the direct production of liquid oxygen and production of methane from natural gas, they could reduce fuel costs by half to 1.15 per kilogram or $0.48 per pound of payload. Labor and other non-fuel costs will be vastly lower for the SpaceX Starship because of the massively lower initial cost, limiting financing and interest costs, and because of vastly higher speed for more usage each day. Fueling costs start out about even, but SpaceX can lower costs by producing their own liquid oxygen and having involvement in making the methane. It can be said that the propellant cost is not so much, so the matter here is ground handling costs. Loading the payload into the Starship, stacking it, refueling it, and doing all of the pre-, during-, and post-launch tasks. Since most of that is automated, $1.1 million sounds kind of reasonable. The above analysis is considered a fixed price. So now let's move to another factor, profit. In business, the key point here is not only how much Starship costs to build, but also how much SpaceX might charge for it, hinting at the profit SpaceX might earn from it. For example, a viable launch vehicle like Starship needs a launch pad. So SpaceX's priority is always to build a starbase and all the infrastructure needed to support it, including the gigantic Mechazilla launch and landing tower that stacks Starship on Super Heavy for launch, then catches each segment of the space vehicle at landing. Just building Starbase costs SpaceX $3 billion. Next, there's Starship and its super heavy booster rocket. SpaceX has spent $5 billion on Starship research and development to date, and testing is ongoing with many testing. The quantity of prototypes and their components, which are spent for test in both ground and sky, are in bulk. When all said and done, Starship's R&D total costs could approach $10 billion, not counting the cost to build each individual Starship after commercial operations commence. Amortizing these costs across the first few units could yield a price tag of hundreds of millions of dollars. For early Starship prototypes, amortizing costs across the first few units means spreading out the expenses incurred in developing and producing those units over their expected lifespan or production volume. In the case of early Starship prototypes, which are highly complex and innovative spacecraft developed by SpaceX, the costs involved in research, development, testing, and initial production can be astronomical. By spreading these costs, across the first few units produced, the price per unit could indeed reach hundreds of millions of dollars. This is often the case with cutting-edge technology and aerospace projects, where the initial investment is substantial but can decrease as production processes become more efficient and economies of scale are achieved. Once R&D costs have been fully amortized so that they no longer need to be attributed to the cost of each new spaceship built, Starship's cost will be $90 million. Not to mention, they are also conducting
constructing a plan to reduce Raptor's cost. Raptor 2 engines are half of the cost of Raptor 1 and Raptor 3, with a much simpler design will cost even significantly less. SpaceX might mass-produce Raptor engines and target engine costs, getting down to $200,000 to $300,000 each. This reduction minus another $30 million in total costs, resulting in a price tag of $60 million. Can't help but mention a Gigafactory, namely, Star Factory is under construction and will be capable of manufacturing multiple starships per week. If that happens, another $25 million will be cut off. Okay, now we have the remainder of $35 million to build a single starship. Ultimately, exactly how much will the customer pay for one starship's flight when Elon Musk refers to the rocket's cost per flight that falls down some point between two and $3 million? That is just their capital price in the beginning. Assume that it costs SpaceX $35 million to build a single Starship and $2 million to operate so they can charge Starship on the market at around $10 million per flight. Based on the above arguments, I think $10 million makes sense at the beginning because Starship only needs to fly about four times to get the average cost down to that point. As a result, a 400% profit margin is what they will be benefited. It seems high, but it's much, much cheaper than any competitor or even its brother's Falcon. SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket launches have been advertised at around $62 million per launch, while larger rockets like the Falcon Heavy can cost upwards of $90 million per launch. On the higher end, NASA's SLS is estimated to cost around $4.1 billion per launch. Another large and reusable rocket designed to be cost-effective, Blue Origin's New Glenn is approximately $20 million for a launch, 10 times more than Starship. Beyond that, if one Starship can fly more than that before before it retires, the price could drop well to two, three million dollars, as Elon said in the long run. That explains why SpaceX has always stepped up marketing and advertising activities over the years to ensure an abundant future customer base for Starship. Last but not least, I just want to say that I'm not a financial expert, so my analysis is totally upon personal calculation. Could be wrong, right? Who knows? It explains why I always look for your ideas in the comments to broaden my mind. That is always the best way to improve myself every single day. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.